This is section 4.3, mean value theorem. And in this video, we're going to go through example 29 in your book. It gives us this function and is asking for the critical points, the intervals on which it's increasing and decreasing, and the min and maxes of the function. Okay, so first step for this problem, in order to find the critical points, we first need to take the derivative. So we take the derivative of this function, and we get this new function. And remember, critical points are wherever the derivative equals 0. So I'm going to take this, set it equal to 0. And now I'm going to solve for my x's. In order to solve for my x's, I'm going to take out a common factor. The greatest common factor between these terms is 3x, and that just leaves me with x minus 8 equals 0. Now I set both of these terms equal to 0. 3x equals 0, x minus 8 equals 0, and solve for x. Over here I get x equals 0, and over here I get x equals positive 8, and these two values are my critical points. Okay, so solve for my critical points. That was the first point. Second point, I want to find where the function is increasing and decreasing. In order to do that, I'm going to make a number line, put on my critical points, and I'm going to check a x value in each of these interval, intervals, plug it into my derivative function, and see what the sign is. Because remember, whatever the sign of the derivative is, that tells me the behavior of my original function, whether it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so when I plug in a test value into my derivative function, remember, I'm not really worried about what the actual value is, I'm just worried about the sign. So over here, I'm going to plug in some super huge negative number, negative gajillion. Okay. <laughs> um, over here, I'm going to plug in a really easy number. Let's just say x equals 1. And over here, I'm going to plug in a super huge positive number, positive a gajillion. Okay. Over here, when I plug in negative really huge number into my derivative, I'm going to get 3, negative number squared. That'll give me a positive value. Um, and then minus, this will become negative, right? Because 24 times a negative will give me negative. Minus a negative becomes positive. This is one positive term adding on to another positive term. That means that the sign of my derivative function, f prime of x, is positive here. Okay, what happens when I plug in 1? Well, if I were to plug 1 into this function, I'd end up with 3 minus 24. That'll give me negative. And over here on this interval, if I plug in super, super huge positive number, I'm going to get really big positive number here minus smaller positive number here, leave me with positive. And this is what I would expect. Generally, at critical points, the sign of the derivative changes. And that's what happened here. Okay, so I know the sign of my derivative. Now I'm going to, oops, now I'm going to see what f of x is doing, my original function. So on this interval here, since the derivative is positive, that means that f of x is increasing. Over here, sign is negative, f of x is decreasing. And on this interval, since the derivative is positive, f of x is increasing. Nice. Okay, so I can say that my intervals of increasing and decreasing are, it's increasing from the interval negative infinity to zero, and on the interval eight to infinity, and it's decreasing on the interval of zero to eight. Okay, got my second point done. Now, the third thing that they're asking me is for the min and max values. In order to determine where the min and max values are, I can just look at this chart that I made. So since I know the function is going from increasing to decreasing at this value, I know that this critical, critical point, 0, has to be a max because the function is going from increasing to decreasing. And similarly over here, since the function is going from decreasing to increasing, I know that this critical point, 8, has to be a minimum value. And I can just write that here. My max value is at the point x equals 0, and my min value is at the point x equals 8. And that's it for this problem. We were able to solve for our critical points, our um, intervals of increasing and decreasing, and our min and maxes just by taking the derivative and checking the sign. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.